Okay, you guys ready? This devlog is for the programming nerds, because it's about to get real thick up in here. Up till now, I've been shying away from diving too deep into programming, because, well, it can be boring slash technical. But you know what is technical? Making a game. So screw it, I'm all in, baby. And since I'm all slash in, I can start sharing all the stuff that I've learned and some tips that I use on the regular to help you guys out. So a major programming part of my game will be the enemy AI. So far I've figured out three different types of baddies that I have a rough guess of how I want them to act. We have the solar powered samurai, who you'll find charging up under his solar hat when you come across him. But once you aggro him, he'll start to chase you till he runs out of juice and has to start recharging again. Once you leave, he'll go back to his docile state where he just wanders around his starting area and recharging as necessary. Next we have what I've been calling the garbage can, though I'll probably have to find a better name for him eventually. He stands stoically waiting for someone to approach, then he gives chase, but once you are no longer in sight, he'll go back to his starting spot and stoically wait again. Finally, we have the boxer, who will teleport towards you, and once you are no longer in sight, he just stops where he is and waits for you to come back. Originally, I had this all as one big script with all kinds of settings on it that decided what kind of behavior the enemy will incorporate. This script was already hundreds of lines long, and I knew that this was not the best approach since the script would grow even more and I would spend hours if I ever wanted to add any functionality to it at all. So I refactored it into an inherent system, which means that I had a parent script that handled any shared functionality, and any unique functionality would be in the inherited child script that lived on the actual object. Now I like to pretend that I am a programmer, so I spent some time just learning how people program in Unity. I spent a lot of time watching Jason Wyman, who is doing God's work over on his channel that I'll have a link to in the description. If you want to be a game programmer, you could do a lot worse than starting there. He also advised watching some Uncle Bob, who talks about clean code, which is a solution to a problem that plagues the whole programming industry. Needless to say, I spent every lunch hour watching everything I could for a few sprints. The general consensus I got was that I should use a composite design in, over an inheritance one. Now this meant refactoring the code I just refactored, but it should mean that later down the line I'll save some time when adding functionality. Chillin', what is composite design? Aw, oh, I'm so glad you asked, viewer. You know, I was scared that this may be too technical and no one would want to watch, but if you're that interested that you asked me, I'll gladly answer. So composite design is just a looser coupling. As always, the best way to teach is example, so I'll bring it back to our enemy AI example. Instead of a script for each enemy that inherits from a parent script, I can just make little scripts for the functionality I need that's not strictly coupled to that enemy. So earlier I described three different enemy behaviors, and instead of having those behaviors locked away in a script specifically for that enemy, I now have these little modules that I can put on anything. Watch as I cycle through the three scripts and he simply starts the new behavior. I can even put the script on an NPC and it'll work just fine. Now I'm running a little short on time and I wanted to share at least one quick tip with you, so... Today on Quick Tips with Chillin', we'll be covering string interpolation. Now I know interpolation is a big scary word, but not unlike most big scary words in computer science, it's not nearly as scary once you know what it is. So what is it? Calm down, I'm getting there. Interpolation means that you're inserting something of a different nature. In our case, we're inserting things that are not strings into our strings, namely variables. Has this ever happened to you? Your character got hit by an enemy for 10 damage, but his health bar shows that he lost 20 health. So, to debug, we're going to write to console the damage that came in. So we write debug.log, and then you want to make sure that you name what you're showing in the log so that you don't get confused. So we're going to put damage, and we're going to add the variable damage to it. And hey look, that's string interpolation. We've inserted a variable into that string. I've taught you all you need to learn to make a video game. I'm going to pat myself on the back and go to sleep for the night. But wait, it turns out that the damage was 10, and now you need to write more stuff to the console. Now we're going to keep going with this style, debug.log, damage, and then we want to add the health. So we're going to name it health, and we're going to add the health variable. And maybe you want position in there, but I don't use the Y coordinate, so we're going to have to just put X and Z, and then we're going to concat that all together, and oh my god, what have we written here? It's monstrosity! 
So for this situation, C# -sharp has a few solutions, but the one I wanted to show you is to just identify the string as an interpolated string uh, using the money sign. So when we rewrite this debug.log and then a money sign, and then we put a string here, we can actually put curly brackets with variables inside of it and it will concatenate it for us. So we just do some copy and pasting here and boom, you've got a very easy to read string that interpolates all your variables inside of it. For extra credits, you can add a snippet to your IDE to make this process even faster. I'm using VS Code, so I just go to File, Preferences, User Snippets, and select New. You can see that I've already made one for debug, so we can go there and check it out. The prefix is just the word debug. So if I go to a file and start typing debug in, it appears, and I can tap it into existence, and you can just quickly copy and paste all your variables into this string, and you have saved a whole bunch of time. All right, thank you so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe and tell me how boring code tips are in the comments below, and check out my website anytime you want updates. I'll see you next time.